Welcome to Communication Skills, Managing Difficult Conversations. This resource is designed to provide tutors with a tool to engage learners in thinking about approaches to dealing with difficult people. Now, most people in the workplace understand that they need to deal with difficult people or difficult customers on a regular basis and have become quite diplomatic about how they do it. However, for learners who are new to the workplace or yet to enter the workplace, dealing with difficult people is often challenging. This resource is designed to help with this. First, we're going to discuss the desired outcome of customer interactions. Number two, then we're going to read and discuss a scenario. Number three, then we're going to use a decision-making matrix to evaluate various actions. Step one, discuss and establish the desired outcome. Now, the objective of this discussion is to help learners to understand that there are multiple outcomes of any interaction with difficult people. There are short-term outcomes, which are usually driven by emotion and self-defense, and then there are long-term outcomes, which might be related to achieving higher-level goals. For example, the desired outcomes when working with customers might include disseminated positive reputation. That is, you want your customers to go out and tell all their friends how great the experience was and to come on in. Number two, repeat customers. You'd want those same customers to come back again. And finally, probably the ultimate desired outcome is to generate income and maintain or establish job security. Now, as we'll go on, we'll begin to see that short-term goals and the long-term goals are sometimes in contrast. Step two, introducing an engaging scenario. Now, scenarios can be written quickly and can be used for a wide variety of tasks and activities. I highly recommend them. The following scenario is contextualized to a hospitality context, but you could use any context you like. Now here's one way you could use it with learners. Firstly, briefly describe the task, that is we're learning really about how to deal with difficult people. Number two, hand out the scenario and ask learners to read it. Number three, have learners discuss the scenario in groups. And four, inform learners that in this scenario, they are taking the role of the owner, Tony and that will become clear as we go on. Tony runs a successful cafe in the CBD. Every lunchtime, the cafe packs full of people due to the good coffee, good food, and good service. Tony is dedicated to high levels of customer service and also has a strong interest in developing and supporting his staff members. Linda is the newest staff member. She has great customer service and manages to build rapport with almost all of her customers. Linda's first week goes without a hitch. She learns quickly, and Tony is instantly impressed with her. One busy Tuesday, four regular corporate customers, three men and one woman, enter the cafe for lunch. Linda takes their orders and begins to make a cappuccino for one of the customers. She delivers their meals to the table and sets the coffee down in front of the lady who ordered it and moves on to collect another lunch order. Now we move into the second part. When Linda returns, the woman is hostile. This coffee is disgusting, she says. You've burnt the milk, I'm not drinking that, and I'm certainly not paying for it. You need to make me another one. Linda is embarrassed, but apologizes, takes the cappuccino, and says she'll make another. Back in the kitchen, Tony tastes the cappuccino. It's perfect. Never mind, make her another one, Linda. Just be polite. Linda returns with a new coffee, and the lady tastes it, spits it back into the cup, and tells Linda she should not be working as a barista or as a waitress. This place has gone downhill lately. She demands to see the owner. Now that's the scenario finished, and that's just an example of something you can briefly write. It's possibly a little bit too long, but the idea is that you write a scenario that can generate lots of discussions, have lots of different perspectives, and gets the learners instantly engaged. The activity. Now this is how we're going to describe the activity for the rest of the resource. And just keep in mind that the learners will be told that they are Tony. They're taking Tony's perspective for now. So first, they would discuss in groups how they would handle the problem if they were Tony. Two, listen to the responses and introduce the matrix. We're going to have a look at this next. Explain to the learners how the matrix works. Have the learners work through the matrix in groups and then discuss the final results. Let's move on to the matrix. Now, a decision-making matrix is designed to help learners think about the ramifications of their decisions. And as you can see, along the top, we have consequences. We have four columns. Now, in these four columns, we've put four different criteria for thinking about the outcomes. Now, if you did this with your learners, you could actually get your learners to come up with the criteria themselves. But for the purposes of this, I've just written them in. So, some consequences. The reputation of the cafe. 
the profit and income, the staff morale and feeling of support, and future businesses. Now on the left you can see there's also a column entitled options and in here we're going to put some options for actions and again you can ask the learners what different actions Tony can take. So some options that I've come up with are ask the customer to leave, explain to the customer that the cappuccino was perfect, apologize to the customer and offer her a coffee prepared by a different barista, apologize and give all four of the customers their meals and coffee free of charge. Now an additional way to do this is just to have a point scoring system where one would be considered poor and five would be considered great. You could have negative or positive or so on. The idea then is you hand this out to each of the groups and they would work through it in group. So let's explore the first column and row. If you ask the customer to leave, if Tony asks the customer to leave, here are the options. Well the reputation of the cafe, the lady might go out and uh, spread you know, bad reviews about the service and also about the state of the coffee. And so that might be a number one. The profit and income, well, if she doesn't come back, they're gonna lose a little bit of profit. It's not too bad, but she might also uh, influence other people who would be coming to the cafe. Staff morale and feelings of support. That is, how does Linda feel? Does she feel supported by Tony? Well, that's quite good. If Tony was to stick up for Linda, then she's gonna be feeling much more valued by Tony. And you can see there are going to be pros and cons to each option. Future business, well, possibly a two. It's certainly not going to be great for the future business. Now, the learners would continue to work through all of these options, and then they would calculate at the end roughly which one is the best score. So let's just have a look at one more option. This is the option of apologizing to the customer and offering her a coffee that's been prepared by a different barista. Well, the reputation of the cafe might go up to a four. She might have such good service and such good feedback that she spreads the story to everybody. Profit and income, they might go out and tell more people, which might bring more people into the cafe. Staff morale and feeling of support, well, perhaps Linda doesn't feel particularly valued by this and that Tony hasn't particularly uh, stuck up for her. Now, the future business is debatable, but probably a little bit higher, hoping that this is a positive experience for the customers. However, we don't know what effect it's going to have on the staff. And so the learners would work through this, and then they would add up the scores. And of course, the greater the score, the more likely it is to be the better option. But the idea of this is that learners are able to be more objective about what they want. So they can come up with multiple criteria for the consequences and the criteria for success, and they can also come up with multiple strategies. In summary, a decision-making matrix can support learners to evaluate the longer-term effects of actions. These matrices have been highly successful in the past. We wish you all the best.